What's up everyone? It's Anna, also known as that Star Wars girl, and today I am going to be talking about the female Thor fiasco again. But we're not exactly going to be talking about Thor, we are going to be talking about Loki because now that they are doing a gender swap for Thor, there are allegations and ideas floating around saying that there is a possibility that they might change up Loki when they already have the perfect actor to play it, but now all of a sudden they uh, want Loki to be gender fluid. So I found an article, so we are going to go check that out. Alright everyone, so I have the article pulled up, and it is titled, MCU will introduce a female Thor, but what about a gender fluid Loki? Ugh. Alright, we're getting right into this. Now let, let, let's read some of this. Thor: Love and Thunder will bring a uh, development many fan will bring development many I I think I think that needs to be Thor: Love and Thunder will bring developments many fans never Im imagined they'd see in the franchise. You're bet your damn ass that they're going to do that. They're making Thor into a woman which makes absolutely no sense. People can argue, "Oh, well, it's canon. It's canon." Just because it's canon doesn't mean it's good and if that's your only argument, then you don't have much ground to stand on, do ya? Jane Foster as the mighty Thor? Valkyrie pursuing a same-gender relationship? It's as far cry from the 2011 that launched the series. You're damn right it is. Cuz back in 2011, they didn't care about any of this bullshit. All they cared about was telling good stories. All they cared about was, hey, guys, let's show this character named Thor, the god of thunder, and his brother, Loki, who is, you know, usually, all majority of the time, almost like 99.9% .9 of the time, a villain, and show their dynamic together, and how Loki is manipulative, and how Loki, you know, Loki the trickster, that, you know, he's the god of that, and how he manipulates the situation so that way he, it can put him on top, but then also shows that he's not just a one-sided, you know, flat character, he's actually, a, you know, a dynamic character, that he has remorse, he loves his brother, he loves his father, he loves his mother, but he's got that inner torn Oil, and that's what adds to why he's such a great villain and up until Thanos was introduced he was known as you know the greatest villain in the MCU so yeah this is pretty damn different because back in 2011 we were talking about that kind of stuff what makes a good character what you know is Thor gonna be worthy is Thor going to be able to wield his hammer again you know what what's going on between that family dynamic oh Loki was actually adopted oh he's doing all of this how Thor has to you know explain that to the Avengers and how he's like hey you guys aren't gonna kill my brother just because he's a bad guy he's still my freaking brother yeah he might be adopted but I still love him just because he does bad Bad stuff doesn't make him bad on the inside because there are some good parts of Loki. That's what they cared about. Now all people care about is who's sleeping with who. Oh, Valkyrie pursuing a same gender relationship? Is that all? Is that all you gotta say? Oh, we're gonna come to this new Thor movie. It's not gonna be about how she became a Valkyrie. It's not gonna be about who she is as a person, what her goals are, because I sure as hell don't know. All she seems to care about is drinking and fighting. What made her into that? Oh, all of the Valkyrie died? Well, why wasn't there a better battle plan? Why don't you go into that? Why don't you go into what made her who she is today? But no, all people care about nowadays is, does it fall under this checklist? And if all you care about about a person is their sexual orientation and who they are sleeping with, you're really limiting them on, you know, who they are as people because that shouldn't define them. And th this is something that I think, you know, a lot of people, and I, I mean, I know so many of my friends that struggle with, you know, just the shit in real life and having to, you know, deal with bullshit just because, you know, they are of a se certain sexual orientation and some people can't accept that and some people have to, you know, do mean things because of that. And they've had to, you know, struggle with that. But there's so much more to them than just that, and that's what they have to explain to people. Why would you just segregate people just because they have a certain preference in that area? Why? They are not just defined by their sexual orientation and by doing this you that that's all you're giving to people oh well guess what valkyrie is going to be bisexual she's going to you know s 
search she wants to be with a woman not a man so you know you gotta identify with her you gotta like her because of that but there's so much more to her than just that so when you put these limitations on these characters you're putting them in a box and you're saying that you know what so so somebody that is you know gender fluid somebody that is bisexual somebody that is of those things on your checklist you're saying that they can only identify with these characters because of that that's very very simple minded to say that people can only identify with these characters because they're like them I, there's plenty of people my, myself included when i go talk about my favorite characters they're usually nothing like me like my favorite character in star wars is darth vader there's nothing similar there aside from the name my name's Anna and his name's Anakin. That's the only similarity that we have. And we're human. We're of the human species. That's about it. But I like him because he's a cool character. There's so much depth and dynamic between him and his son. I like that. That's why Darth Vader is my favorite character. I like Loki too. I, I like Loki too because I like seeing that dynamic between him and Thor. Anything similar between me and Loki? Absolutely not. Absolutely freaking not. But I like the dynamic between him and his family. That makes me invested in his character. And you putting that limitation on people saying that they can only like, or yay, we're finally getting this, we're finally getting that. If that's all you want, all you want is representation, then you're not looking for actual good storytelling. You're just looking for that little, you know, check mark list. And it's not going to add to the dynamic of the story. You want to take already established characters and make them fit into your little box, but that's not who those characters are. Why don't you go and invent characters that have these qualities and maybe they're struggling with it and they become a superhero because they're able to deal with that pain that's inside them and they're able to utilize that and they have other things that are going for them aside from their sexual orientation like i don't understand why that's such a foreign concept to people nowadays you want a character to be like that you want it to have all these check marks then make your own don't go and change something that's already been established it's not going to help and it's just going to alienate the original fans of these characters because you're coming in and changing something that was not broken and people don't like that and people are going to speak up against it because I sure as hell don't like it. I don't like that, you know, my characters that I like, uh, you have somebody like Chris Hemsworth playing Thor, who actually wants to continue to play Thor. He's not like Robert Downey Jr. He's not like Chris Evans, where like, deuces, I'm done, kill me off. I don't want to do this anymore. Chris Hemsworth's like, no, yes, let me play Thor. I'm down. And he's great at it. And the dynamic between him and Loki, it's so good, and I don't want to see that ruined, which I have a feeling it's going to, because all people tend to care about nowadays, at least the people in the media, is, oh, we're, we're going to have this member of this group in it. Oh, we're going to have diversity. We're going to have this. It was already diverse. He's a freaking ice giant. It doesn't matter that the guy that's playing him is English. He's playing the character of Loki, a Norse god. Do you think Chris Hemsworth is Norse? No, he's from Australia. It doesn't matter because they play the characters so freaking well. I don't think we're ever going to get to see another portrayal like this again, at least in, you know, our lifetime. And they casted the two best people for the job, and that's what's important to tell this story. And all people seem to care about nowadays is this stuff and it doesn't make any sense to me but I know that was a challenge let me finish reading this article all uh, right uh, and place Chris Hemsworth and Tom Hiddleston on their paths to stardom but now that Marvel Cinematic Universe has made Valkyrie's queerness canon again just because it's canon doesn't mean it's good it's time to ask if any other characters are also part of the LGBTQA community again why would you be limiting these characters just to their sexual orientation? If Valkyrie wants to be bisexual, fine. I don't have a problem with that. But when that's the only thing that people want to talk about as far as her character, she's so much more than that. 
when I watched Thor Ragnarok, okay, it, the first thing that popped in my head, okay, you're a Valkyrie from Asgard? What are you doing on this planet? What brought you to this planet? Oh, all the other Valkyrie died fighting this battle? Why was that? So you're on this planet dealing with your loss? Okay, and you're, you're an alcoholic because of that? Okay, well, well, let's explore more of that character. Let's see what brought her to that, how she's dealing with it, and why she turned to alcoholism, why she went to that planet, instead of going and doing, you know, other things. How did she become a Valkyrie? How is it that, you know, Thor didn't know her? Why? These are questions. Not a single one of those questions has to do with who she's sleeping with or who she's interested in sleeping with, because that's only a tiny part of who she is. And when you limit people just by their sexual orientation, you, again, you put them in a box. There's so much more to people than who they want to sleep with. Alright everyone, well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, that's okay too. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Make sure you click that little bell. That way you get notifications when I do other videos and live streams. And until next time, everyone, have a great rest of your day. And may the force be with you because we are really, really, really going to need it. Bye, everyone. What's up, everyone? It's Anna, also known as that Star Wars girl, and I have an Etsy store, so if you've ever wanted to own a print of my artwork, this is the place to go. As you can see, I have a lot of recognizable characters, from horror films, to heroes, to Star Wars characters. Some of the notable characters I have on here are Darth Vader, which I did a couple live streams painting, so you can own a print of this painting. I also have Luke Skywalker, the binary sunset version, one of my favorite scenes in the original New Hope movie. I have Darth Maul, which Ray Parks himself actually complimented me on Instagram. And then last but certainly not least, Ahsoka Tano. So if you want to own any of these prints, go right on over to my Etsy store. Again, that's the art of Anna, that Star Wars girl, or TSWG for short. Thank you everyone and have a great rest of your day. What's up everyone? I have a P.O. box, so if you want to send me some mail, go ahead and send it to Anna, that Star Wars girl, or TSWG for short, at P.O. box number 28171, Santa Ana, California, 92799871. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you so much.